Hello and welcome to Counterculture. I'm Peter Whittle. Now, over the past three months, it would appear that British history has come under a huge attack. Nowhere is that more clear or emblematic uh, as the attack that there has been on our many statues up and down the country. And it's not just from protesters, it's also from institutions who are now talking about revising our landscape and indeed, therefore, our heritage. This has left many people feeling utterly bewildered and upset and a bit powerless. However, some of us have got together to fight back. We're launching a campaign called Save Our Statues, which you can see here. This is the front of a new website. We're going to be discussing what the campaign will do, how you can become involved in it. But I want to start, first of all, by talking to my guests here about the wider issues of why this is so important. So with me to discuss this today, I'm pleased we have Emma Webb, who is a writer and works at Civitas, Jack Harris, who works with her and is a researcher, Robert Pohl, who has been saving our statues in a campaign on Twitter in the past few months, and Richard Bingley, who is an author and security expert who has been on the show a number of times before. Thanks very much for joining us. I mean, obviously, we've all got together to start this, but I, I, I want to talk really, first of all, about the actual issue. Emma, you know, why are our statues so important? Well, I think it's important for people to be able to have a sense of their for, for a start it's the ownership of the landscape of the people who lived here and who lived here before it's yeah. the sort of Berkey and partnership between the, the the people who came before us and the people who will come after us and yeah. our custodianship of the things that they have passed on to us that we should pass on at least in the same if not better condition to our the people who come after us um, but I also think that it's um, it's it, it's almost an issue for um, democracy and the stability of society because often revolutionaries like to wipe away the cultural landscape and to put things at sort of ground zero so that they can begin again with a clean slate and I think that it's important for people to be able to meet their um, heritage and their history face to face in the street yeah. so that they have historical perspective because it's kind of reciprocal once you start losing that historical perspective, it makes the instability worse because people don't understand their history properly and it becomes this kind of ideological narrative that we tell about our history rather than the sort of tricky and sometimes difficult as aspects of it. Um, and I think that also when, when they start to you know wipe that history away, that has a serious destabilizing effect on society. And it's also, I think it's it, from a moral perspective, I think we have a responsibility to ensure that these things stay as they are and that we protect them. Um, and so I think there are a number of factors as to why it's important for us to protect the statues, um, but those are just a few of them. Well, no, but they, they seem absolutely, incredibly basic and important ones. Richard, what, 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 is your, what has your reaction been when you for example, see graffiti on statues, or when you, you know, how how do you feel? How does it affect you? Uh, you know, not not just me, but everybody. I think I have spoken to feels viscerally upset about this. You know, and it's uh, we're not unusual in that that, that we all share a, a, a cultural heritage. Um, you cannot just simply delete and stamp out history or, or aspects of history one doesn't like. Uh, you know, it's empirically proven that when that's been done in other societies it causes huge mental health issues, it causes huge social instability, you know it's the pathway down to sectarian violence between different political groups and, 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 and ethnic groups, uh, it's just not something that should happen in a stable civilised liberal democracy yeah. and it's absolutely wrong um, for anyone who's an elected uh, politician particularly or, or a police chief to, to support vandals and people trying to delete our history, you know it's, it's Absolutely, yes. um, upsetting for I think for everybody. Yes, is that what motivated you when you started on Twitter, Robert? Very similar, yeah. Um, really, it was in the immediate aftermath of the Colston statue incident in Bristol, which I watched. I think with feelings a lot like most people did, which was that it was wrong, and um, whatever you might think about the man, if you'd even heard of him, um, it wasn't the right way to go about things. Um, we have to stand up for due process 
and it seemed that at that time there weren't many and still not many voices public voices speaking up for due process or the rule of law over the rule of the mob um, so yeah that that prompted me to to start the campaign on Twitter um, and also just um, my general passion I have really for our history and for statues and sculpture in general I think um, like Emma said these, these things are part of our urban environment they enrich it they give it depth and character and it would be a poorer place if we lose that. Mm. I think, uh, interestingly, uh, Britain has a particularly huge amount of statues, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> I, I'm sure you are too. Yeah, did you ever give statues a second thought? Before? No, not at all, no. Um, I, I really like statues, to be honest. I think when I see them uh, in the landscape, it reminds me of uh, the people who lived before us, yeah. uh, which is great because, you know, uh, sometimes you can feel like you're living in a... Uh, an ever continuous present, yeah. and sometimes that that connection with the past really uh, gives you a sense of belonging, which I think mm. is important. Um, but I completely agree with Rob as well, though. I think uh, when the Colson statue fell, it felt like a very terrifying moment, a sense that you know all of a sudden our our country, a place of you know democracy and liberty, was being taken over to some extent by a sort of mob mentality. And it's it's not everyone, but it was it was a very concerning moment. So, um, yeah, statues are important. Yeah. It's, it's odd. Don't you think that when that happened down in Bristol, there was something that seemed also very new and alien about it, the, the, the way people were stamping on the statue? And whatever you think of the man, you know, I mean, President Macron said, didn't he, you know, basically nothing is going to change in France, you know, for good or evil, bad deeds or good deeds, this is our history. We don't seem to have heard this from our senior politicians, have we? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think Boris has been verbally very strong on it, you know, uh, and, and Pretty Patel have, but, but actually they are in a tiny minority, uh, and th then you have to have, uh, following behind that, you have to have the civil service and the police actually enforcing the law, and it seems to me that in some parts of the UK that the law has been selectively in, in enforced. So, um, you know, it, we, we, we've come, I think all of us realise, we come to this point where in 2020, even if there's the political will, you know, from the Prime Minister or from senior members of the Cabinet, that this, this country, there's a, there's a real disparity between what, what then gets delivered by the police and the civil service. And if there's a resource mm -hmm. issue, you know, if, if as the police chief in Bristol started saying after the event, um, I mean, he started out by supporting the event, and then saying afterwards he didn't have the resources, mm -hmm. well, he, he should have had the resources. You know, that's a, that's a political issue, and it's something that the police would have been aware that protest was happening beforehand. So why didn't he flag it up beforehand? Mm. Why wasn't there mutual support from the police constabulary? So it's not just about political will. I think, I think um, it's a bit a, a sort of like a, mo like a moral and revolutionary frenzy what we saw with Colston mm. and have seen since. And you know, I was there when they graffitied the Churchill statue and was standing on top with one of those um, flare, smoke flare things. Yeah. Um, and it had a feeling of kind of like it was just like letting off steam. And I think that. Um, unlike in France, I think here for some reason there's a sense that probably leadership know that around the country the support would be heavily in favour of the statues and isn't with the, the people who are pulling these statues down. Um, but I think that, that, that there's a, a sense that, they, that there's more of a cost coming from the revolutionary element than from the mass of people because mm. everybody has been so silent about this and they because the, the the sort of way that our politics is aligned the cost isn't there for you know a, what is essentially offending the larger proportion mm. of the population um, by destroying their history and heritage and I think that's why there's been so much traction with campaigns like this that um, are giving those people a voice and we need to make it clear to, to leadership that there is also a cost for failing to listen to the majority of people um, and to articulate the arguments against this sort of revolutionary fervour because I think that it's something that has been gradually embedded in our society for a long time that this, the groundwork has been laid for this um, and we, we, we need to have some kind of correcting element in there. This is an important point, is it about the groundwork being made? I, I know how I interpret that, which is that basically our institutions don't really, aren't strong enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, w would you agree with that, uh, Robert? Yes, I think so. I mean, l like you said, the scenes in Bristol, they're perhaps an exception is what's happened here. It, it, was, it is a bit alien, I think, I suppose, as a country, we, know, we haven't, don't really have a history of violent revolution as such. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's not the only threat. I mean, that 
the um, response to that has been an encouragement, I think, to everyone who shares those views. And the threat is not just um, physical in that sense, but it's also, as you're saying, it's, it's in the institutions. And the threat continues um, in the councils now who are all running reviews and audits of their statues and public monuments. Well, I want to talk about that in some detail a bit, just a bit later, because, you know, people, I think people just including me, don't quite understand how it works. Do you know what I mean? How, how this can happen in the council and what you can do about it. But this institutional thing, I mean, there was a poll uh, recently which uh, basically showed, it was a couple of weeks ago, I think 70% of people are proud of British history uh, and also about 70% of people, um, you know, for example, last yesterday, I think, uh, said that we should keep the songs in the last night at the proms, right? It sometimes seems to me that the 11 or 15% uh, who don't feel that are the ones in sort of in charge of the institutions, would you say? Well, well I, I think what's abundantly clear from this when we look at the individuals involved in, in the, the so called Black Lives Matter movement in the UK is that they are a complete fringe movement who all, all are pretty much ex socialist work, workers' party activists. You know, they, they, they're not even people that got elected into parliament or into local councils. These are really fringe people yes. that seem to somehow have captured the moment where. Premier League football clubs are sort of dancing to their tune, where police chiefs are dancing to their tune. Yeah. And, and um, there, there really is, when we talk about 10 or 15% of people supporting them, I'm, I'm astonished at that figure, because if you look at it politically and sephographically, the, these are people who have never made a mark in democratic politics, which is exactly why they're violent, it's exactly why they're extreme. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I actually think politically in this country, we still, we don't have a problem. You know, we had a a general election last December where there were two clear parties and where one party clearly won. There wasn't a, an issue with the structure of democracy then, but some, somehow post-Covid it seems that we, we, cannot, we cannot govern ourselves and we cannot actually enforce a liberal democracy here when, when we need to. Mm. Yeah, it seems as if we have entered into an era of our politics that's very alien to British culture generally, like uh, Rob was saying, that we're not a violent revolutionary people. Actually, on the way here, um, I walked past the face-off between Cromwell and um, King Charles, and that's very sort of symbolic of the the consequences of our revolution. Is this um, tension that's actually marked with statues um, between Parliament and the monarchy, and the sort of delicate balance of the ecosystem that makes Britain what it is and gives us its ca its its character. Um, and I think that this. What, what we've been seeing gradually over time, like you said, with the institutions, but now has sort of bubbled up into this kind of crescendo, um, is it's some kind of visceral assault on um, Britishness or Englishness itself. And I think that's why people feel it so strongly, because they feel as if they're being personally attacked, because mm. it is a symbolic attack on them as a people at the very core. Yes, it's almost like I feel that sort of our context is under attack, you know, the things that give your life meaning. I mean, I know it's, it sounds a bit pretentious maybe, but, you know, I felt this, and friends of mine felt this, wasn't a statue situation, but when someone put Dickens, a racist on Dickens Museum in Broadstairs, I just, I felt so personally upset. I mean, it's not, we should say, it's, it's not actually just statues, that, it's also street names and memorials. It, no, of course. Um, I think what you said about the disconnect between the people who actually want to enforce this policy of tearing yeah. down statues and uh, the people and the public more generally, I think that's a vital one. Um, the fact that some people could say Churchill's a racist is just inconceivable to the vast majority of people. And I think a lot of people aren't stupid as well either. When it comes to the things like the Dickens uh, or other statues like Colston, they see this as part of a wider movement for the Black Lives Matter protests, which a lot of people are really alienated about. You know, they, they've read, they, they've done their research. They know that there is something questionable about the way you know the Black Lives Matter leadership occurs and stuff. And and people aren't stupid, you know. Um, and I think you know, a lot of people do respect our history, and almost in the same sense that you know we we respect the NHS today. You know, it will never be reformed. I think the same thing can be said about uh, British history and the way that people you know perceive the past and Churchill. You know, they are they are ring fenced. They are important to us. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's to, to the same extent that the NHS is as well, and the disconnect between you know politicians who aren't really fulfilling what the people believe in yeah. and what the people think themselves, I think is um, it's massive at the moment. Yes. Can I ask you a bit about this thing about the councils? You know, apparently there are 130 Labour councils. Is that right? Yeah. 
And, and what exactly have they said they will do, Robert? <coughs> well, most, I think, now have said that they will be looking at their statues in some way, and even beyond that, as you say, to street names and, and other, other memorials. Um, some reviews even including war memorials, just really? general ones, not, not mm. to individuals, um, which I think most people just find shocking and unbelievable. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it, it seems to be now that there's a, a big push to have these reviews and not many voices speaking against them. Um, anyone having listened in on a few of these meetings, as you can now, and, or, or read about some of the reports of them, anyone who speaks up in defence of statues is immediately labelled as a racist or their, their views are being silenced, I think. But it's not, the point is that sla it's no longer about slavery. I'd say it's no longer even about Black Lives Matter, actually. I mean, uh, that might have sort of started it, but essentially this has been a, like a touch paper, is it not? I mean, what do you think, Richard, is it, it seems to me that it's essentially trying to, well, basically delegitimise our, our story in a way. I, th I think it still feeds into this, this um, sort of long march of the institutions you know, that you, you alluded to uh, a few minutes ago, that, that, that we have collectively come as a society to hate ourselves, you know, we particularly sort of public... We don't, do we though? No, 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 no just, <laughs> but this, what, what's very marked about this is, is there's, there's actually sort of a private sector split and a public sector split, you know, that, that I, 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 I've got sort of two types of friends, you know, is that some of them are entrepreneurs and, and business people that that are kind of barely touched on, on on this issue until this year, and very much see their society now un, under attack and threat. And but there, there has been on the public sector side sort of a, a, a creeping kind of um, contamination, you know, of institutions where we're just simply not allowed to be sort of confident about our local public realm. And uh, I mean, the, the, the obviously for the first time in many years, local elections are now becoming ma massively important for people. Yes, you know, because this yes. is the epicenter here, you know, places yes. like Plymouth, Portsmouth, uh, Elite, etc. Uh, and I, I think there's no other way to kind of challenge this, but to, but to make this the, a single issue election next year. You know, it, it's do you support liberal democratic public realm that is uh, exudes our history, you know, all of our common heritage, whether you came to the country sort of 20 years ago or 200 years ago, it doesn't matter. Mm. Um, or, or are you kind of a cultural nihilist, a cultural extremist? And I, I think we need to make this the, the massive local election issue next year. Yes, of course, as you say, there are the local elections in May that were postponed from this this past year because of COVID. Uh, also, in, in, in terms of these uh, revisions, obviously the London mayor has come up with this Commission for Diversity in the Public Realm, which sounds does sound straight out of Chairman Mao's little red book, no. Um, but but Jack, in you're in Watford, aren't you? Yes. You're yes. In Watford. There's a, what's happened in Watford? Yeah. So in the last week or so, the council have voted to rename some of the streets in Watford. Uh, we have a, a Colonial Way, an Imperial Way, a Rhodes Way, Clive Way, and. Um, it's just absolutely staggering, really, when you think about it. You, I mean, you first have to put it in context. It's just road names, you know. It's not like the, you know, the Queen Victoria statue in Leeds. It is just road names. But you have to also think as well the bigger picture. People are just completely bizarre at what's going on right now. You know, yeah. a lot of people are upset about what's happened with coronavirus and, you know, fear, you know, the economic catastrophe that's coming. And you know, Watford has its own problems with knife crime and um, infrastructure problems. And yet they're spending their time yeah, yeah. reviewing road names, and you're thinking, you know, rather than dealing with, you know, Cecil Roads, deal with the actual roads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the whole rename, yeah, <laughs> very good. You know, roads, um, not roads. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But um, it's absolutely bizarre, and you know, I've I've been talking to people in the community, and you know, reading the Facebook posts, people are just saying, what the hell is going on? Mm. It just seems like it's absolutely bizarre. And you've had this. You must have had this reaction all the time. Robert. Yeah, um, I think these things, street names and statues certainly have been hijacked in a way to, towards this agenda that you, you talked about. Um, most people know they don't really symbolise these things. They're not put up to symbolise racism or slavery mm. and no one really looking at these statues has ever really believed that. Mm. Um, but that's what they've, they've been um, changed now to, the story's been rewritten that these now celebrate these, these things that they don't to become a symbol for it. Whereas really, I mean, what Emma mentioned earlier about the statues of, of Cromwell and King Charles, you know, I think we should be quite proud that we have both sides yeah, in yeah, statues. Yeah. That, that shows really what statues represent and what they don't represent. It doesn't, it doesn't represent everything about a particular person, everything they said or believed. Um, it they're there just to remind us of, 
of the past that made us and, and to be a, a symbol of that. That's the point really, isn't it, Emma, that we are, you know, as you mentioned Burke at the beginning, you know, the, the, what right have we got actually as a generation just to alter history? What right have we got? I think this is why Orwell has become so prescient and has oh, seen isn't a kind he of revival. Orwell? Well, Orwell, they, someone did try to cancel <laughs> Orwell as well. Right. Um, but yeah, I think this is why his work has seen a sort of revival is because, and, and Jack alluded to it as well, it's this the endless present that he talks about in 1984. Mm. Um, and I think that it is, as, as Rob was saying, you know, the, the, this, the loss of subtlety in our understanding of our own history. Like every person, every nation, every group of people has a right to their own history. And I don't think you would ever see, you know, people wouldn't be arguing this about any other country in, in the world except, you know, within the West. Mm -hmm. um, it's, 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 a, it's a right that people have. And, and I think that's why people feel so strongly about it. And I think the reason why um, Orwell has seen this kind of revival and has become so powerful, partly because he's given us the intellectual tools for understanding what's going on, um, but it's also because of this kind of totalitarian streak within mm. the, the movement from its, its inception, from even before the statue started being um, torn down. That's the intellectual background of this means that it just spreads and spreads and spreads, which is why it's not just about statues to do with slavery, it can be to do with Dickens, it could be to do with anything, because the, the, the ideology behind it says that everything is complicit in white supremacy. Mm. Um, and therefore every aspect of our history is in, somehow, in, in some way white supremacist, which is why people have even been talking, no surprise, we actually predicted that this would happen, about the monarchy. Mm. And that, you know, if, 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 um, if the, the, uh, the heirs to the line of the throne don't marry out of, you know, yeah, yeah. out of their race or their group as is being described by, by these uh, activists, then that is somehow white supremacist as well. And so it, there's this kind of totalitarianism that just rings so true with mm. Orwell's writing, and particularly 1984, mm. that people are just sort of sitting aghast thinking, mm. Mm. you know, how, is th how has it got to this point and, and how has it turned so quickly? And I think the answer to the question of why it's turned so quickly is because it's been a long time in the making and this has just kind of sort of thrown the match into the tinderbox, as it were. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, Richard. No, I was going to say, it's, it's uh, you know, in, in a way, it, 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 we're talking about sort of local democracy and, and the question we have to ask ourselves is with, with, with these reviews is, is, is if the councils vote to approve, say, the destruction of the statue, you know, well, how do we feel about that as a society? What do we do about that? Because, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm slightly older than you, but I, re I remember vivid footage of the Buddhas of Bamiyan in two, 2001, you know, the Taliban mm. government, as it was, in Afghanistan, you know, that, that was the government in place that, that bombed the 150-foot Buddha statues, two of them came down. And, uh, and then ten years later, over in, in, in Iraq, where the, the Shia shrines were destroyed by, by Sunni jihadi terrorists, essentially. Mm. Now, the British Museum, of all the organisations around the world, the British Museum went out, sent survey teams to, to document the damage and, and try and assist there. But here we are, you know, 10, 20 years later from, the, from those things yeah, that we, yeah. all of us, unconditionally accepted as extremism, as things that we did not want to happen in the West, mm. in enlightened societies. Mm. We're actually found finding our councils discussing doing it in front of our very eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a complete vault farce of, of, of society. Mm. And, and, and the idea is that we're actually an enlightened society anymore. Yes. It's also, um, it's, as Jack alluded to as well, it's about priorities, isn't mm. it? Because the, I think it was, it cost two thousand five hundred pounds to remove Colston from from the harbour. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm. The amount of money that this is going to cost from the public purse for um, the. Sadiq Khan's Orwellian review um, for these councils to be reviewing all of these things. And they're doing this, spending this money and also their time and resources on this issue at a time when we're facing probably the most economically insecure um, and destabilising period since the war maybe even longer, I don't know. <laughs> I think um, longer, actually. The, and the, the, but the priorities are just so clearly, yeah. completely um, warped. And I think we, we, we're seeing this in so many aspects of our, of our public debate, not just in relation to statues, this kind of weird moral distortion. Mm, mm. Um, and we just seem to have completely lost our way. 
There, uh, what, what one should say is that I mean, you know, obviously it is a, it, it, we're all very worried and concerned. That, that's why we're here. Uh, but there have been successes. I mean, there was somebody, uh, Baden Powell, you know, uh, in pool, I think, uh, in, in Dorset, was under threat. Uh, I think it's a Lib Dem council, if I if I remember. But uh, somebody did organise a petition, uh, uh, which basically made them change their minds. I, as I understand it, he's now there and he's going to stay there. Um, that's great. But if we can just move on to to uh, this campaign, um, you know, people will be sitting here at home or watching, and they'll be agreeing in everything. But they say, well, "What do we do?" So, Richard, can you just tell us with this with Save Our Statues? You know, what can people, what can they find on this side? So, so what we've done is set up a, a coalition. Yeah. Uh, that coalition aims to form local branches and regional coordinators, because this can't be done centrally. Uh, and those local branches will, for example, be uh, launching petitions, uh, legal actions against councils that are behaving correctly. Uh, they'll be taking uh, regulatory action against schools and colleges that change the curriculum without going through due process. Mm. Uh, if people are being violent in that constituency, and are not being held to account by the police and the council uh, crime prevention teams, uh, we will have people that launch uh, various private prosecutions against those individuals. Uh, any harassment that is made by extremist groups against people that want to defend their statues in a non-violent, direct way will be protected by our legal team and by our council support mm -hmm. team. Uh, but what we're asking and encouraging people to do is, is uh, all the online petitions are great, um, all, all of the social media is fantastic and the work Rob's on is absolutely unprecedented and you know, it's getting lots of traction mm. but please org organize yourselves like the far left have organized themselves for years against that public realm mm -hmm. um, these statues can't be protected by people just just signing petitions they have to ensure that councils locally are going through due process uh, that, that appeals are being made that lawyers are um, supportive of, of the processes that, that, that we will be uh, mm. taking on board and that basically that we make this the largest political issue over the next couple of rounds of local elections mm. and going forward. Mm. You know, because when, when I hear that Baden Powell statue is protected for now in Pool of Dorset, <laughs> I don't know what political group is, is running that, but they obviously know there's a local election coming up, so that they and they obviously know that their decision is very, very unpopular. So, so you know, like Sadiq Khan here in London, who probably does have a lot more support for knocking down these things. Um, outside of London and outside the metro metropolitan cities, people are up in arms about this. So don't take your council at face value. Yeah. Um, make sure that there's a campaign structure in place, that there's networks that you're all meeting face to face, mm. and that going down the line five or ten years, that we all know each other, we know what to do mm. when this mm. reoccurs again. Mm. Yeah. I was just going to add as well, um, I'm not sure, I don't know who the person was, but the, the person who defended the uh, Baden Powell statue yeah. and he had that sort of stick in the air. We want to channel that energy because yes, there are many yeah. more people across the yeah. country. You know, this isn't a sort of you know far, we're not far left. You know, we just want to channel that energy so that people have somewhere who's actually going to re represent them. Yes, because yes. a lot of people, you know, as we said, are very much believe that their statues are important to them. Yes, and so you know we want to find people like that yes. and make sure they're on board. Yes, and there is there is a lot of it out there for sure that I've that I've come across on on Twitter um, and yes the two main things we've been looking at at the moment really are are the petitions because even though they are limited I suppose they they are quite valuable and the other side has really been weaponizing them and using them well to trigger council reviews um, and also just to give the impression of numbers I think they don't really have um, behind them but yeah. these petitions it seems to impress people yeah. um, so I do think it's important that we get council petitions going and, and try and, and don't give up, don't be defeatist about that from our side. Mm. Um, and yes, the other thing that we've been looking at on on Twitter is is the council reviews, asking people to lobby their, their councillors, mm. publicising the dates of their reviews in advance, mm. um, voting records, showing who votes for and against these things. So there there is a lot of action to take there. But I absolutely agree mm. uh, with everything you said, you know, we need to organise more and more. The more we organise the the better we can tackle this. Well, I think that, you know, basically, hopefully, we give people a focus and uh, a way of, of doing that. Uh, thank you all very, very much, you know, for coming, talking about it. Um, uh, it is, as I say, it's a, a coalition of us getting together to try and fight what's going on. Uh, this is the website again. We showed you at the very top. 
and you can show your support entirely for free by going on and just ticking saying join or I support you or whatever it is and uh, that would be uh, great because then we'd know that you are behind us um, and that is very very important so do look up it is uh, saveourstatues.org.uk saveourstatues.org.uk all right thanks very much and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you and seeing you on the website take care bye